In this video, I'm going to cover Google Forms. What are Google Forms and what, what, what do we use them for? The Google Forms can be used to collect data from different users. So let's see how we can develop a Google Form and use it to collect data from our users. Now, you need a Google, a Gmail account for you to access Google Forms. So if you do not have one, please sign up for one. And I've gone to the drive, Google Drive, where you type uh, HTTPS uh, semicolon double dash drive.google.com. So if you go to that URL and sign in, you'll go to the Google Drive. So I've gone into the Google Drive and I've also uh, created a new folder which I've created forms. So this is my workspace and now I'm ready to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a Google Sheet, which will be used to collect my data. So I right click, I go to Google Sheets. Then it opens this sheet here. I'm going to call it results of form. So this is where my form uh, results are going to be submitted to. So each time someone submits a form, the results are gonna come to this uh, sheet here. Okay, <clears throat> now this is my sheet. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is create a form, you right click. Uh, if you don't see Google Forms here, if you're using this for the first time, it will not appear here, but what you can do, you can go to more, and then you'll be your uh, Google Form. So for my case, it is right here, so I just click on that and I, it opens this form here. I'm going to call it a test form. So now this is my form. Now the first thing I need to do is connect this form to my spreadsheet. And uh, to do that, I need to I think come to responses here, click on these three dots, uh, and come here and say select response destination. Click on that. So if I do not, by default, it creates a new spreadsheet, but I want to connect it to the one I created. So I say select existing spreadsheet, then come down here and select. Then it shows up here. Then you click on that and your responses are now connected to the spreadsheet that I collect, I created. So now I'm going to show you how to uh, create a form. Now, before we go into these details, on top here, uh, when you hover here, you see customized theme. Uh, you can, this one helps you to customize how your theme looks like. You can choose different colors you want and it will change accordingly. Uh, you can change the font, uh, the text size, and the rest. You can also choose an image. And by default, Google Form gives us examples of different images that you can use. There's illustrations here, um, categorized into birthdays. If the form is about a birthday, Maybe you could consider that food and dining. Uh, you can select any of these. Let's go under illustrations and see whether there's something I can select here. Uh, let me just select this one here and say insert. So when I do that, uh, the form, the image is inserted on top here. Now, this is basics for Google Form. Now, after we have inserted our image and done all this customization as we want, we start creating our form. So I gave it a name, test form. Uh, it requires a description. So I see up here also it's a name. So this is a this test form. So you can describe what your form is doing. It's collecting data about students or staff 
or whatever, this is the way to go. Now, after you've done that, in the next year, we are going to start creating our questions. And to create the questions, on the side here, there is a bar. And the first one is add questions. Import questions, you can import. That's for another video. You can add a title and description and the rest, add a video, add sections, but these are basics, so we shall go by add question. So I click on add question. My first question is your name. Okay, I type there my name. And of course, when I hover over here, I can make this bold. I can make it italics, I can underline, I can place a link. I can remove the remove formatting and the type of question here you can select what type of question you have. So for a name I need a short answer. Now that's I don't need an, a long answer for it. Uh, for if my question was required a long answer, I could use a paragraph. There is a multi choice uh, questions or answers. You Select from multiple choice. There's a text check boxes. You tick the answers you want. We have a drop down here. We shall see how to use this. We have file upload linear, and these are for more advanced cases. For this simple one, your name, we shall go with a short answer. We don't need a long answer for a paragraph. So a short answer works for us. So that is for the name. Now, when you come here, uh, down here, we can duplicate this question. Uh, if we have a similar question with a short answer, we can easily duplicate it by clicking on duplicate. We can delete this question if you do not want it. And if you want to make this a required field, in other words, before the form is submitted, this field has to be answered. So you need to check this and make it required. So you need to make it required. Don't want any form to come without a name. Click here, there's description and response validation. Those ones are for a much advanced video, which we shall look at in later stages. Now, that's my first question. Let's demonstrate another type of question. I said you come here, add, maybe let's use this one. Now in this case, let's select uh, a drop-down box. Drop-down box. I'm going to say your favorite. Okay. Also this. Your favorite fruit. So I'm trying to do a survey about fruits. And then I'm asking different people their favorite fruits. So I'm going to use a drop down and I'm going to give it options. And you have a restricted answer from where to select. So option number one, I'm saying uh, that is orange. Option number two, I'm saying mango. Uh, option number three, I'm saying Apple. For now, those are enough. We are using a drop down, and uh, that is it. So, the next item, and by the way, if you want to preview your form to see how far what you have developed, how it looks like, there's a preview button here. So, click on that preview, and then you'll see how your form looks like. So we have uh, our name here. You can enter our name. And then our favorite fruit. You can see the drop down here. And this is not required. So we can go and uh, remove this. Go back to this one. And also, I want to show you something under uh, responses. And uh, it's taking some time to load here. Don't, uh, 
there is also customizations under settings that you, you can customize your responses. Uh, collect email addresses. If I want to collect email addresses, as I get the response, I have to check this. And when I do that, it adds it into my form. Send respondents a copy of this, of their response. Maybe if you want a response to be sent to whoever has answered, you can use this field here. And then there are, if you want to limit the response, limit to one response, I, one person makes only one response, you can do that. But in, if you do that, uh, people will be required to sign in into Google. So let's leave that one out for now. Next down here, we have things like progress bar. You want to shuffle the questions, the order of the questions. There's one there, confirmation. Your response has been recorded. Okay, that's the response we get when the result is recorded. So we can play around with that and see what we get. So these are some of the settings that we can do. Now, if I go back to my questions, and I come here, I don't need this one. Now, you'll observe that an email address has been added on top here. And this is because when I went to settings, I made email a required field. Now, uh, assuming this is my form, and the next thing I want to, I want to do with this form is to test it out. Then I go to preview there. Now, my email address, I enter my name, I select my favorite fruit here. Remember, I also checked the progress bar. If there are different pages, it shows us the progress that we have so far entered. So I do that and say submit. Your response has been recorded. If you want to change this, you can change this response in the settings. I left it as default, that's why it appears like this. So my first entry has been submitted. I submit another one. I put an email address here. I enter my name. Come down here, select the fruit. This time let's go for orange. Come back. I'm trying to test my form and see how it works. There you go. Select the fruit. Select apple. Let's enter another one. Like so. Let's enter the name. And the fruit uh, is mango again. And submit. And also the other feature I've not shown you, assuming you have entered uh, some information here and you do not like what you have entered, you can clear the form. Uh, then it will clear your answers out. So, so far we have entered some information into our form. Now let's go back to So when I go back to my form, it gives me four responses. Four responses have been uh, provided. So if you click there, have been submitted. Uh, who has responded? Gives me the email addresses of those people who have responded. Then when I, when I come down here, it even shows me a graph showing me Gianna 50%. Uh, Robert 25 and Bob 25%. And it also draws for me a pie chart down here showing how my results have performed. Now that is all good and fine. Now the next thing I want to see is whether 
my results have been populated into the form. So I'll click on my response there on my sheet. Then it will take me to this uh, Google sheet. And you can see it created with these rows, columns, the timestamp when the form was submitted, the favorite fruit, the name, and your email addresses. So this is how you can get a form and submit it to the different users who can use it. Now, the other thing which is also important is is to share the form. If you want to share the form, you can just use this link here. You copy this link on top here in your preview, and then you share it on email, or you can, you can send an email to someone with that link. When they, link, when they click on that link, then a Google form will open up, they fill in, submit, and then you get your results. So it's a good way of collecting data from users for different purposes. I thank you for watching. Uh, if that's all I had for you in this Google Form Basics. I'll be making more forms, uh, more videos about this Google Form. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and have a great day.